Holiness in action. Holiness of God's holiness, then he is holy, he is special, he is unique. He moves to select and make a people holy. So God's holiness gets him, he selects a people, and he says here in Exodus chapter 19, verse 16, he says, you will be for me a kingdom of priests, the whole nation, a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. Out of all the nations of the earth, Israel was special. Out of all the nations of the earth, Israel was special. Israel was unique. Israel was separated, special to God. Special to God, a holy nation, separated from all the other nations of the earth. It is through that nation that God would send his son. And so the, God's holiness moves to select and make a people holy. Now, can we make something holy? Now, this is, this is a little bit weird, but just follow me. Can we make something holy? And the answer is yes. Okay? Remember, the Ten Commandments tell us, remember the Sabbath day to do what? To keep it holy. How is the Sabbath day holy? Is the Sabbath day a special day? Are we supposed to reverence the Sabbath day to make it special? We don't do what on the Sabbath? Work. You're an Old Testament Jewish person, and you don't do that on the Sabbath. Okay. By the way, when is the Sabbath? When is the Sabbath? Okay. For the Jewish folks, Saturday. Okay. When does the Sabbath start? Okay. Friday night when the sun goes down. Friday night when the sun goes down. That's when Shabbat Shabbat starts. Friday night when the sun goes down. Most Jewish families, when the sun goes down, the Jewish family will have Shabbat dinner as a, you know, as a family together. And that's when they'll celebrate as a family. They usually have Shabbat dinner. Friday night, as the sun goes down, family has a dinner. They call it Shabbat dinner, okay, Shabbat shalom kind of thing. Uh, that means you're saying goodbye on Friday. And it's and basically Friday night. When does the Sabbath end? It goes Friday night, when the sun goes down, it begins. And it goes till when? Sundown, Saturday night. What do the Jewish people do Saturday night after the sun goes down? They party, okay? The sun goes down, Shabbat is over. Saturday night, the sun goes down, everybody's out on the streets. If you're ever in Jerusalem, you go to Kikar Zion and, and Jaffa Road, and it's, you will see 10,000, at least 10,000 Jewish people swarming all over, everybody's having a good time, and they're all out in the streets dancing, partying, and getting down, okay? And this is on Kikar Zion, okay? They call it Zion Square. And things. So, anyways, so that's the Sabbath, okay? So, Sabbath, you don't work. Saturday night, when the sun goes down, boom, then the lid's off and they have fun, okay? Now, you can sanctify something. Does anybody do Latin? The first part of this, do you see this word sancta? Sancta? What, what's another sancta word that you know? Sancta is a Latin for holy. What's another sancta that you know? Sanctuary? Okay, if I said a sanctuary, is a sanctuary a holy place where we go to worship? Okay, a sanctuary. But by the way, let me just say this. What about a bird sanctuary? Have you ever heard of a bird sanctuary? Is a bird sanctuary a place that is special for birds? Yeah, so the idea of sanctuary being some special place for, in that case, birds, or sanctuary for the, yeah, where are you going with sanctuary? Uh, not with sanctuary, but um, back to the Sabbath. If it's Saturday, then why do we do it on Sunday? Okay. The Jewish folks do it on Saturday because that's the seventh day. It got moved to Sunday. Basically, the early Christians they actually celebrated Sabbath because they were Jewish. Okay, The apostles were all Jewish. Jesus was Jewish. They celebrate the Sabbath. When Jesus rose from the dead, they switched to celebrating the seventh day or the special day on the, to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. There was also probably some tensions between Jewish folk and Christian folk, and so largely they moved it to Sunday because of the resurrection. Yeah, and some of the people would celebrate both Saturday and Sunday. Okay, but largely the resurrection, because the resurrection was on Sunday, the church moved our special day to the re celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. So, good question. Okay, so sanctify something to, means to set it apart. To set it apart is something special, and these are special things to make it holy. Now, what we want to do is say, how do you make something holy? And think, what types of things can be holy? What types of things can be holy? There's holy oil. Holy oil. Now, when the Bible says oil, what type of oil does it mean? 
Uh, I heard a preacher once get up and say, you know, Asher will dip its foot in oil, and that means that the tribe of Asher has oil underneath it, and they need to drill for the oil because the Bible says there's oil down there because it says oil, Asher will dip its foot in oil. Is that totally like bogus, like totally, absolutely crazy? There's other words for it, but it's totally crazy. Whenever the Bible refers to oil, it's not referring to, you know, uh, 1020 or 1030 oil, weight of oil. It's talking about olive oil. They do everything with olive oil. They cook with olive oil. They uh, all sorts of stuff with olive oil, okay? And so olive oil, they take olives, they press them, it makes olive oil. They do everything over there with olive oil. By the way, it's really good on bread and things, but anyways, olive oil. By the way, what do they do with oil too? Oil is like a holy substance. What do they do with the oil? They take the oil and they do what? They oil someone. That is, they put oil on someone's head. We call that what? Anointing. Now, what is the, the Hebrew term for taking oil? And what you're taking is this holy substance of oil, and you're designating somebody as holy. You're designating them as holy. What do we call that process of taking oil and putting it on someone's head? You say we call that anointing, but what's the Hebrew term for that? You all know it. I'll say it. It's called Mashiach. Mashiach. You oil someone. You oil someone is Mashiach. Mashiach you Mashiach them. Okay, what's Mashiach? Can you hear the word? It's in English, okay? Can you hear the word Mashiach? You a Mashiach? Yeah, it's the word Messiah. Messiah, the term Messiah, Mashiach, actually comes from, the Messiah is the oiled one. The Messiah is the oiled one, the anointed one, okay? So for example, who, were, who was oiled in that culture? Would the priests be oiled, anointed with oil? Would the kings, does anybody remember Saul? You haven't read that part yet, but Saul and David were anointed with oil as kings of Israel. And so the kings would be anointed. So the Mashiach is the oiled one. Mashiach, Messiah, how does the oiled one come over into the New Testament? The New Testament's in Greek. You know what the Greek word for oiled is? Christos. Christos. Does anybody hear this? Jesus what? Jesus Christ. You thought it was his last name. No, Jesus Christ isn't his last name. It's Jesus the what? Jesus the anointed one. Jesus the Mashiach, the oiled one. So the oil is used, when you want to make something holy, you anoint it with oil. And so oil is the special substance, okay? Oil is a special substance here. Incense is another thing that's really pretty holy. Uh, they would burn incense in a really holy context and the, the fragrance would fill the air, and there would be a special in, a holy incense. So these are two things that were considered holy in various contexts and things. Now there's holy places. Holy places. You have, do you remember Moses walking up? Moses walks up, he sees this bush burning. So Moses says, whoa, look at that, man. This bush is burning. Daylight's out of itself there. He walks up and says, man, the bush isn't burning. So he walks up, and he takes a look, and all of a sudden when he takes a step forward, what happens? The bush says what? Mission accomplished. Okay, what does the bush say? Okay, the bush says, take off your shoes, you're on holy ground. Take off your shoes, you're on holy ground. Okay, so was that place holy? Why was that place holy? It was a bush that was on fire. Why was that place holy? It was a special place. God's presence was there. Moses approaches, and what's the problem with the approach? You're getting too close. Take off your shoes, it's holy ground. Okay? And do some religions, even till this day, express their feeling of holiness by taking off their shoes? Yeah. Okay, so this holy ground there, the holy of holies. And what does this mean, the holy of holies? If I said to you the song of songs, what am I referring to, the song of songs? Song of Solomon, but it's called the Song of Songs. When the Jewish people say the Song of Songs, plural, what they mean is that this is the bestest song ever, okay? They mean it's a way of doing superlatives for them. The, whole, the Song of Songs means the absolute best song, okay? So when they say the Holy of Holies, what does this mean? This is the most holy place. This is like, this is... As that song is like the best song ever, this is the most holy place ever kind of thing. The holy of holies is the most sacred place. And so it's a way for them to say, you know, like uh, the best, the most holy, the, the holiest kind of thing. Like we would use EST on the end of a word to make it the mostest. The temple, the temple, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. The Lord is in his holy temple. 
Why is the temple holy? Because God's presence is there. And his presence then makes that place holy. Yeah, Sarah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just narrate what she just said. That's exactly right. Um, on the Day of Atonement, once a year, they would go into the Holy of Holies place. They were so afraid that if something happened to them, they basically would tie a rope around them and then a bell and stuff. And if, if so, they went down then, <laughs> what the problem is, if they went down because they weren't pure, the other priests go in, what happens to them? They go down too. So what happens, they put a rope on them so that if he goes down and stuff, they can pull them out and so that it won't be for the Holy of Holies. That was in the time of, around the time of Christ, Josephus and some of the other people mentioned that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, so this is the Holy of Holies. Now what we have he so far here, we've had the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle, the tabernacle where they move in this tent that we've looked at, and eventually will the Holy of Holies come to reside in the temple, and you'll have behind the veil there of uh, the temple and stuff. By the way, you also have the Holy Mountain. What, what is the Holy Mountain? Mount, what, what is the name of the mountain that's considered? When God says, my Holy Mountain, what mountain is that? Zion, okay, Mount Zion. Has anybody ever heard of that? Mount Zion, which is in Jerusalem, the Temple Mount. Okay, my, God calls it my holy mountain. By the way, oh, let me just do another one just out of my head. Do you guys remember Mount Sinai? You guys have read Ex Exodus 32. Remember the mountain shaking and stuff? God's presence was on the mountain. The people were told, were they allowed on that mountain or were they told to stay off of it? Yeah, the whole mountain became holy. God's presence was there. Moses gets to go up. The people stay off the mountain. Okay, and the animal, animals were to stay off the mountain too. So God's presence in a place as being holy. By the way, have some of you experienced places that, that are special places to you where you've kind of met God and they're special places? And I want to call those as holy places, okay? Places, special places where you've met God. And um, anyway, so just you need to think about that. Different places, uh, different things that are holy. And then 